Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayor Roy and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And the past two weeks I haven't really been here and there is a lot that I want to tell you guys and I will say in this video, but before I get started with that, I do owe you something that was already recorded in my, like I already have it on my computer, which is a review that I did after ordering Printful, one hoodie, which is the 18,500 Gildan, as well as a sweatshirt, the 18,000 Gildan, as well as a hoodie from Society6. And I do know that a lot of people will probably get it wrong, but which hoodie do you think is best? The one from Printful or the one from Society6? And the thing is that this was pre-recorded, my hair is longer <laughs> in that video, and also I was talking in that video, you know, it's Wednesday, so it's product review days because I had this kind of channel schedule and I will talk about that, about who won the raffle for the font, what's been going on with me for the past week and a half, two weeks, what's the future of this channel. But first, let's go to me three weeks ago and talk a little bit more about Printful and Society6 comparing their hoodies and sweatshirts and, you know, see you guys after that. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayro and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today is another print on demand apparel review, reviewing basically two items from Printful and one item from Society6. And I've already reviewed one of these items. I mean, there was a video a few weeks ago with me and YouTuber Corinne Prater going over the 18,500 Gildan hoodie by Printful that she ordered with her design of a cute little cat and you can go ahead and check out that video with a link to it down below. To me my biggest problem whenever I'm ordering anything online if it's apparel is knowing the exact size. I like very loose clothes whether it's you know a personal taste choice or because of fibromyalgia and I feel very uncomfortable in some stuff. I'm, I'm very sensitive to smells, to fabrics. So for me Seeing that she got a stinky hoodie, but you know, a very good one, just the smell of the color was insane. Seeing that she got a really good hoodie and size medium made me say, you know what, I'm just gonna order this in size large. So I ordered one hoodie from myself from Printful with the text on it that says respect art. That design of respect art was actually created after I did the video where the Fiverr seller that I was trying to order graphic from defrauded me and sold me someone else's work. So I did this quick little design on Procreate and I printed it on a black hoodie. The hoodie that I chose was again the same hoodie that Karin took was the 18,500 Gildan Heavy Blend Unisex Hoodie color black size large, but I also wanted my little cow on one of these designs. So I ordered a sweatshirt, which is the 18,000 Gildan crew neck sweatshirt, military green size large as well. But I also got one of my hoodies from Society6. I was really interested in seeing if the quality of their art because everybody's saying that society six is for artists so i did want to see the quality of their apparel if you've seen the video that i did last week showing off the quality of print on demand wall art pieces you know prints and canvases and posters from society six redbubble final works guten made a small appearance as well as printful then you know that i was very pleased from my designs that i ordered from society six like from the artwork that i got from society six and I was really optimistic about the sweatshirt and I have been wearing it for so much. It's one of my favorite items. So you know what? I'm just gonna stop talking right now and get started with showing you guys the actual products. So from Society6, as you can see by the branding of this hoodie, came incredibly well sealed. Like it was like sort of like pressure seal. What's going on with my hair today? came incredibly well sealed in another small bag. This one! <laughs> it's so cute. Now the full price of these hoodies, if I'm looking at the store, would be $54.99 plus shipping. Right now Society6 has 30% off on this item. Being the seller of this item, I paid a total of $41.63 for shipping and the product. The actual product was around $30 or $29, and then, you know, $12 for taxes and shipping. And $30 for this hoodie, for me, was not so much. I know that a lot of people don't like this type of printing. As you can see, there are like some, maybe like some parts missing here. Like it's not, a lot of people think that it's not the best 
printing in the world, but I do have to say that this hoodie is one of the best things that I've ever worn. I mean, the inside of it is just so, so soft. The best thing about this hoodie is that unlike, ah, the Gildan stuff from Printful, the moment I got it, I could have just worn it because it doesn't smell. It was the first time that I ordered a print on a man apparel product that did not smell. It was amazing. And I love it. I know it's a bit oversized. I think some of the girls would say, you know, because my shoulder ends here and this is here, but I just love it. The thing is, I didn't really see this part. I mean, if I'm looking at the mock-up, these are black. And I know it might sound weird to some people. However, if I had known that these would be like, you know, white, pale, beige, I would have tried to design the owl to match, as well as there are some differences with the owl. The owl that I originally made was more brown, and I think that the reason that I didn't notice that this is more red is that because this actually looks better. <laughs> this actually looks better than what I designed, so I didn't really notice it. As for the label, this is from Next Level Apiro, extra large size, made in El Salvador. Because yes, I ordered this in extra large, because I like very, very, very big hoodies. It was overall a really good purchase. If I was the end client, I don't think that I would want to pay $54 for it, or I'm sorry, $55 plus shipping. But right now that it's on Society6 for $38.5 plus shipping, I think I would have paid that amount having known the quality. I'm pretty sure this is going to be like my favorite hoodie ever. Um, I'm wearing it so much. I, I think I, I already washed it like three times. I've been wearing it so much. And I will leave a link to that one down below if you want to go ahead and check out my beautiful and insanely high quality hoodie from Society6. Again, there are flaws in this. I'm not saying that there aren't. The colors are not the same as the colors that I uploaded. This is a lot more red than the brown that I've uploaded. And this in the mock-up is black, but I still like it. I mean, this is how personal these things could be because for me, it took me literally four days to realize that this was white and not black. And just making this video now, after having this hoodie for two weeks, I realized that the colors were different. It was just so pretty that I didn't even realize it. So moving on to our printful stuff, which came of course like this. I just don't like it. It feels like you're buying stuff from AliExpress whenever I get this in the mail. But again, the good thing about Printful is that the shop that I had integrated with Printful many, many years ago was called Dainty Mugs. So that is the name of the seller, of the sender of this item, which is incredibly important if you're selling your own art. And when I'm talking about Printful, I'm also talking about the fact that I'm kind of reluctant to try them on. I haven't tried them on yet because the smell is really bad and I'm very sensitive to smell and I think I'm going to go shower after doing this and wash these like 11 times. But let me just, oh wow, this is so bad and I have to close my window to not have like noises from the outside, but this is disgusting. Uh, the prices of these hoodies are $22.33 for the hoodie and $18.80 for the unisex crew neck t-shirt and I'm trying to see if that was the actual price or if this is a price that I paid because I'm the artist, because you can actually have uh, three items per month to order from Printful and pay a discounted rate for, as well as sometimes free shipping. So I ordered as a seller for myself, the unisex, oh my God, it's so bad, heavy blend hoodie and the unisex crew neck sweatshirt and a pack of stickers. And it cost me $44 overall. I'm sorry, it's just so bad. So gonna shower after this. Oh, so sorry. I keep making these noises. Oh, wow. Okay, this smells bad, worse than Karin's one. Okay, um, this was my design of Respect the Art with a hoodie, as you can see here. And this is the large size. Now, I really don't wanna put it on. The inner part of it is not as soft as Society6, as well as the outer part. I do have to say that in terms of printing quality, and again, yes, I used RGB files, this looks nothing like the mock-up. The colors are completely different. 
Some of the elements that are actually visible on the design are not visible here, and the colors are completely different. I didn't actually see any recommendation to the type of file to upload, so I just uploaded an RGB. I do love the printing, but the accuracy with Society6 would be more accurate. In terms of the fabric itself, inside of the fabric it is kind of soft and outside is nice, but having seen the Society6 quality, the outside of the, of the hoodie of Society6 is far better than this one. This one is kind of rough and the inside of Society6 is fluffier. So the external part of Society6 is more comfortable to the touch and the inner part as well. Plus Society6 hoodie did not stink. So I'm gonna, I'm sorry for not wearing this, but you also saw Corinne wearing this, so that's fine. I'm gonna put this on the floor because I don't want it to touch anything in my house. And we have the crew neck 18,000 Gildan size large. The printing quality is spot on. The colors are really good. And oh my God, it's so bad. But I haven't tried on that one. So I'm going to, ooh, the inside is fluffier. The inside is very fluffy. The outside is a bit rough. These are a bit uh, very, like, these are a bit restrictive. I kind of don't like them. I feel like they're too, too, like, this is too much of a fluff. I don't really like it. And just to compare it, to Society6 where it's like this. I kind of think I prefer that one. And let's check it out. Oh, oh my God, it smells so bad. Okay, let me just upload the mock-up. And I don't know if you can see this, but this is not the color of this hoodie. <laughs> I mean, I get that, that this would not come up, but maybe the print, why am I having the sticker on me? I'm barcoded today. I totally get why this print might come off different, but the color of the hoodie is completely different. I thought that this would be army green. It's more like pastel green, like dark pastel green. So I'm not really pleased with the color of the sweatshirt. These are extremely tight and this is a size large. Um, overall, I am far more comfortable with the Society6 hoodie. The hands are very nice, very easy maneuvers. There is no these like little inching things inside. You can see them clearly here. It's like very so like it's like it took all the sleeve and really put it pushed it in, which I personally don't like. The colors came out beautiful. This was a mistake. The colors were a bit of a mistake. The external part of the sweater is super soft to the touch. And again, this is from Next Level Factory, not from not, not the Gildan something. And the sweatshirts and hoodies of Printful, the first of all, the smell is insane. The printing quality is nice on the hoodie and better on the sweatshirt. The sweatshirt, the 18,000 Gildan sweatshirt, has a better inside lining. It's very soft. It's softer than the one of the hoodie, and both of these are not as soft as this one inside, but the external area of both of these is very rough. Combining with the smell, the print quality, the overall comfort, and the fabrics, I would say that Printful hoodies and Printful sweatshirts don't come anywhere near to the quality of Society6 hoodies. I was actually really surprised by it. And to be honest, I feel like I've been going about this wrong. I remember when Karin wanted to order one of her designs on a hoodie and I was like, you know, don't get it from Society6, don't get it from Redbubble, get it directly from a supplier and save money. Because you know, when you're getting it from a marketplace, you're also paying for the marketplace itself. But to be honest, I like this so much better. I like this so, so much better. Society6 quality just doesn't even, it's not even at the same level as Printful. There is no comparison whatsoever. By the way, if you like this video and found this content useful, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video, I'm gonna show it to more people. And subscribe to my channel if you wanna keep seeing me spend money on print and demand products, giving you print and demand tutorials, as well as digital download tutorials and sharing with you guys what I am personally doing with my own print and demand printables journey.
With that being said, and with the extreme urge that I'm feeling right now to take both the hoodie and the sweatshirt of Society6, including the shirt I have under this, and throw them deep, deep in the washing machine for at least five times, that was it from me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as usual, I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next video. Bye! And we're back to me. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this little review of Printful versus Society6, talking about print and man hoodies. And I, I was kind of thinking maybe I need to re-record it. The thing is that I already cut the sweatshirt up in the neck and I already threw away the packaging and washed these a few times. And I think I wore the Society6 hoodie like a million times. <laughs> and so I thought I might as well just keep up the previous video that I have made and I hope that you enjoyed it. Coming back to this whole thing, I... I've been getting so many messages in the past few weeks, uh, whether it's comments or DMs and even emails, for good and for bad, about not being in this channel. And I don't mean to be a Debbie Downer, but like the bad was like, I remember getting this one email saying, hey, I saw that you took a break from YouTube for mental reasons. I have some questions. And like, I'm not even joking, like 18 questions about how to build an Etsy store, how to do this. And the person literally ended that email by saying, I know you're on a break, but you need to answer your followers if you want people to continue following you. And I got this about two days after I said I need a little bit of a break from YouTube. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, I don't even want to reply. Um... I also got some DMs saying, hey, when are you coming back? It's not fair. Uh, I don't know if it was like a good thing or a bad thing, but I did get so many comments and so many DMs and so many emails uh, that are just supportive. So I would like to thank you all. I mean, it's been really weird to me. I was sitting here yesterday with my friend Darling and I was like reading some of your comments out loud. And the thing is that a lot of people think like, you know, you've been, it's a burnout, you know, you don't have to do YouTube. Um, there was this one sentence that resonated with me is that you can't pour from an empty cup. The thing is that you guys give me energy. I mean, I'm saying this and I already can see myself at 7 p.m. like doing this live chat with you guys and answering you guys and I can already see like how cool is it gonna be even though at 7 p.m. I'm supposed to be at the co-working downstairs eating pizza because <laughs> we have pizza and movie night tonight. You guys give me so much energy and I don't know. I mean, I remember before I started the YouTube channel, I was following a lot of channels myself. I was following, obviously, Shimi Morrison, Eva Knows, and The Hive or something. I was following so many channels, and I remember feeling odd having this connection to a person that I've never met and who's never met me, but I'm, like, watching, binge-watching their videos. And fast forward almost a year after that with this channel that was open in January, I could not have ever imagined that other people would have this feeling for me. So thank you very much. What I've been doing in the past week, uh, week and a half, is 80% nothing. <laughs> I mean, I had this one day where I was just like hanging around with a friend of mine. It's like, let's go to Roslog, which is the town next to us, and just bought a bunch of stuff at a Euro store, like stuff that I need for the house, and then just sat for 45 minutes next to the river and just, you know, talked. And then the minute we came back here, I was like, she was like, I need to go pick up my boyfriend. Do you, do you want to come? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Any reason to not be home. And I went to Blagoevgrad, which is the town, uh, the main city closest to here, which is, I think, around 53, 55 kilometers from here. Like, had a full day out, uh, went to H&M, uh, some secondhand shops, which is uh, my guilty pleasure. Had sushi for the first time in so many months. And while also attending so many events here, like karaoke nights, which you can still hear that I, like last karaoke night on Friday was such a killer. I don't even have my voice back yet. It was so much fun. And with all the fun also comes feeling different. I mean, you're having fun with uh, healthy people. <laughs> and I just think that it's been this like crazy swirl of emotions. Several people who are relatively close to me left in the past few weeks, like left Bansko, whether it's, you know, to continue nomading, to go back home. And I know it's a part of the life. I mean, I, I'm living the expat life 
So I'm um, an expat here. I'm a resident of Bulgaria. I even went today and actually got like a permanent phone plan, like a, not the top up permanent, like temporary SIM card. And I know that the majority of the people who live here are nomads. Like they're traveling, they're going to be here for a few months and they're going to go. But it's still kind of hard when the people that you were seeing on a day to day basis, especially one of my best friends from home, just up and leaves, like moving on to the next destination. So dealing with that, and I think that I wasn't mentally prepared to deal with a coccyx injury while it was still happening. And it wasn't my first rodeo. I mean, I broke my spine in nine places and so many different times. I broke both of my knees, dislocated both of my shoulders in different times, had my elbow twist, my wrist, my foot. Um, like, seriously, my, my, my medical chart is like, just don't bother looking. It's too long. And dealing with this new thing, feeling so helpless after I've, you know, I've mastered my condition and then something new comes along which is the exact opposite because you know with my back condition it's always you know the minute you start feeling a little bit tired sit down and then with a coccyx injury you cannot sit down <laughs> and it's been so limiting and I, I got all up in my head how am I gonna live like this um adding this up is just impossible because sitting down was my way of always being able to do things and I felt like that was taken from me. I'm still making these videos while sitting on this, but I have been going out more. I've been trying. Um, I don't know if you guys, for, for those of you who have been following me for a long time, you might recognize this view from behind me uh, because this was my first apartment here at Folly Clover. So this was my first apartment in this complex and I had to leave it because I couldn't use the bathtub anymore with my coccyx injury and I, I moved to two different apartments and yesterday I moved back because I'm my orthopedic doctor in Israel cleared me uh, based on how I'm feeling to go back to being in a bathtub. So I got my old room back, which I'm super pumped and I'm not going to show you like the other side of the room because it's like, this is like a very nice organized bed and then like piles of stuff <laughs> because it's still uh, just a lot of piles of a lot of stuff. But I did start putting my art on the wall and I am going to, I'm thinking about doing like a, um, sort of a tour in my room and in my office showing off the different print on demand stuff that I have lying around. So let me know in the comment section down below if that is something that is interesting to you guys. And I wrote so many stuff here, so much stuff here. I have been putting up more attention to Society6. There's going to be a, a better video about Society6 coming up in this channel, like start to finish, because the first video that I did on Society6 was sort of comparing it to Redbubble. And I want to treat this platform on its own. They also have jigsaw puzzles now, which is exactly what I was looking for, a supplier with good jigsaw puzzles and like normal shipping rates. So I have a jigsaw puzzle on its way to me from Society6 and of course I'll keep you guys updated when it comes. And if that jigsaw puzzle is awesome and good, that will pretty much give me what I needed to have the motivation to throw myself into MissJigsaw.com, which is a website basically where I'll be uploading my own art to be doing it as an online jigsaw puzzle, but every single thing that I'm uploading, people can also buy the actual puzzle, as well as Puzzle Lover t-shirts. And that leads me to a lot of t-shirts that I've uploaded onto TeePublic, especially with a puzzle niche. And uh, on top of the fact that I ordered a jigsaw puzzle from Society6, I also ordered two more pillows and a notebook, and I made an order from TeePublic. And the order from TeePublic was made quite some time ago, and I think I ordered a couple of t-shirts, a hoodie, uh, I think I ordered something for my laptop. I'm not even sure yet. Uh, I don't even remember, but I do know that I spent in the past two weeks at least seven hours with FedEx trying to release one t-shirt from customs. One. Because uh, I never got an invoice from TeePublic. I got an order confirmation. I got a shipment confirmation. I never got an invoice. And they need an invoice to prove that I paid VAT. And the thing is that when you log into your TeePublic account, because I bought from myself, I can't see myself as a buyer, only as a seller. So I don't have any way to see my own orders in terms of getting my own invoice, which drove me nuts. I mean, what kind of a platform is this? And uh, I even signed power of attorney approval to FedEx to open one of the packages, like to open it, literally, they would open it because I thought maybe the invoice would be inside and it was still not there and they couldn't reach TeePublic 
And then I had to sign sort of a statement that I confirm that the t-shirt was $5. And I was like, I was telling the girl from FedEx, but this does not cost $5. TeePublic wrote the wrong amount. And if they wrote the wrong amount, you know, trying to avoid customs, that's really bad because, you know, that's illegal. And I'm still waiting on the delivery from them and to let you guys know how that goes. But honestly, in this journey of trying to find a good and reliable supplier, I have to say upfront, Tee Public, I think, is failing. And I feel like the more I dove deeper into this mess of they have good products, but the ship, but the packaging and shipment is wrong. And, and though they have a really good packaging, but the product is not good. And, and this is too much money for shipping. And this one, I can't even order this to Bulgaria because they don't ship to Bulgaria. And all this mess of stuff clashing with sort of a new way of life with my coccyx injury, with my closest friends, some of my closest friends leaving here. All of this like jumbled up together into me just needing some time off and I do love making these videos like I don't feel I, I feel really good making them I think maybe the problem was the schedule I mean the whole Monday through Friday every single day on a different topic I kind of felt like I was obligated to do it and it's funny because I can remove this schedule of Monday through Friday and end up doing 31 videos which is more but I feel like um but I feel like I need that freedom. So, and I have that written down here. I also did a lot more fonts. I have not uploaded anything to my Etsy store. Not the fonts that I made, not the digital backgrounds. I'm thinking about just adding it to my Payhip. Payhip integrating with its own domain created a big mess. I think I'm just gonna keep it that like that. And while doing all of that, I am also um, helping out here and organizing sort of a Christmas pop-up bazaar for artists to sell their art. So a lot of artists, you know, they need to send me their stuff and contact information. And you need to explain this to people and show them the space where it's gonna be. It's gonna be in our co-working on 4th and 5th of December. And we were trying so heavily, like for me, I wanted to find a charity cause, an orphanage, something to donate the money to. And apparently it's very complicated to donate money and stuff in Bulgaria. And I was like losing my mind telling the owner of this place, like, I need you to find me a place to donate. I need you to find me a cause. And we ended up finding sort of a governmental uh, funded group home for kids with development issues, with retardation, uh, low IQ, low motor functions, autism. So we are going to have this bazaar with some of the aspects in the bazaar for people to donate money so that we can, we cannot donate that money ourselves, but we can take the money that was donated to buy sort of like educational games and like talking tablets for those kids. So that's been in the works as well, and a lot of other things. And I do feel like the future of this channel is, I don't know, let's just go back to the beginning. Let's just go back to me finding a cool topic or showing you what I'm designing today and you commenting down below to this video, what kind of videos do you want me to do? Is there a print on demand supplier you're really interested in? Or what is like, What's lacking to you? Do you need more help with like marketing? Do you want to have another Pinterest tutorial? Do you want to talk a bit more about how to find the right print on demand supplier for you? Maybe I should make like, you know, 20 print on demand marketplaces. Maybe you haven't heard about some of them. Or maybe you're more into selling printables. Maybe we can go with like how to make labels or have another stickers tutorial or cute stuff that are really niche down. I was thinking about doing like a vegan niche tutorial or mental health tutorial, like sort of print on demand and printables kind of mixed up together. Let me know if that is interesting to you in the comment section down below. But I did have a debt to you guys, and I posted uh, my video on how I make fonts. So that was a, an epic video to make, and I started making this like weird font in it with like lines and circles. And the thing is that I promised on the video next, which was how to make one-on-one um, -on -one wall art ratio using Procreate. So I promised that I'm I'm gonna give you know people who comment I'm gonna have a raffle. I had my another binny, a new binny here with me to put some of the names of the people who commented and draw out five names to make a raffle and choose five winners for this font. The thing is, um, as I was writing down, while there were a lot of comments to that video, a lot of people didn't want to participate for the font, and there were actually only six participants. So you all get the font. So Lisa Oliver, and these are names of YouTube channels, like the, the name that you have on YouTube on that video. So Lisa Oliver, Fat Robin Books, Laura Moore, Darlene Lorimer Viveth, I can't read it. I think it was Viveth Jobs and Cindy. Please 
whenever you want, just contact me. I'm on Instagram at me.arroyo and send me your email. So I can send you your free font. And if you don't have Instagram, it's via Facebook. Or you can try the contact option of this YouTube channel, which I don't really use that email a lot. But, you know, if you don't have Instagram, that's something you can do. But if you do have Instagram, I'm at me.arroyo. And you can send me just your email that you've won the contest. Please let me know what's your name on YouTube and that you've won this contest. And I'll be happy to send you your free font for commercial purposes, nonetheless. And I don't know what video comes up next after this. I don't. I don't know if I'm going to make a video tomorrow, if I'm going to make a video next week. I'm just going to wing it. And hopefully you guys will like it, even though it's not that planned or not that scheduled or not that structured because, hey, F the algorithm. And with that being said, <laughs> that was pretty much it from me for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you so much for the amazing support that you have given me in the past week and a half. I know it feels weird when I'm sitting here in a room literally talking to myself because this is like a camera photographing me on selfie but I do appreciate and feel the connection to each and every one of you and you have made me smile and cry for good reasons in the past week and a half so you guys rock and if you've seen any of my live premieres you pretty much know what is about to happen right now because the live chat that is that way I think is gonna be over in three two one and I'll see you guys in my next video Bye!